This is Dimitri Lascaris reporting from San Juan, Puerto Rico for the Real News Network. Uh, on this uh, current uh, excursion through Puerto Rico, we're exploring the effects of uh, austerity uh, on Puerto Rico and also the aftermath of Hurricane Maria. And today I am jo joined by Jose Caraballo, an associate professor at the University of Puerto Rico who has a PhD in economics. Uh, he's previously been on The Real News and thank you for joining us again, Jose. Thank you for inviting me. So Jose, I, I, you know, in my uh, prior experiences uh, as a correspondent for The Real News, I, I've covered uh, quite extensively the austerity crisis in Greece. And uh, you know, one of the interesting uh, aspects of what happened in 2015 when the Greek people were confronted by a referendum about austerity, even though they ultimately voted uh, quite strongly to reject an austerity package being imposed upon them by the European Union at the time, there was a lot of fear about uh, leaving the Eurozone. And uh, today, when I was at the, uh, the Puerto Rican uh, grid conference here in San Juan, I had a conversation with a gentleman uh, who used to sit on the board of the uh, utility PREPA, and he told me that although he personally felt that there uh, were excellent prospects for Puerto Rico as an independent state, that there was also here a lot of fear about uh, a divorce between Puerto Rico and the United States. Can you comment on that, uh, not just in terms of the sentiment of the population, but also in terms of what you feel as an economist the economic prospects would be for Puerto Rico as an independent country? Well, first of all, I think there are many similarities with um, what you say about Greece and Puerto Rico. Um, in, in the case of Greece, uh, the Greeks suffered the imposition of this troika from the European Union that was imposing a, a huge austerity program. And Puerto Rico is facing a, something very similar to the troika. It's, it's what we call the fiscal control board that was imposed by Congress. And so far, after two, two years of assistance, what we have observed from this board is a uh, huge austerity, especially for pens pension uh, for, for the retirees. Uh, in the case of the University of Puerto Rico, they cut by half the subsidies provided by the central government, and also um, cuts to education uh, and also to the health. Um, plan for for the vulnerable population. So what we have observed is uh, uh, that that the programs are very similar. And I don't know. I, I have the hypothesis that that if we have this referendum in Puerto Rico, most of the people are going to reject um, the austerity measures that have been taken. Uh, and also, when when I listen to you, I think that we many people will also reject independence and and being out of this uh, monetary union that we are with the United States and for, for more than a hundred years. Uh, what is interesting is that it wasn't always like that. Uh, in the first half of the last century, uh, independents have um, more supporters than they have right now. Uh, so what happened in the, la in, the, in the second half of the last century is that many of the federal programs that, that, are, um, that apply to the U.S. Were, were applied in Puerto Rico, especially the SNAP program and, and, and many others, su such as Section 8 that is for housing and, and others. So people here are proud of their Puerto Rican culture. You can see many flags after the Hurricane Maria and people were celebrating where and when we have a, a, a gold medal in the Olympics. And, and you, you, you can feel, uh, and if you put the news, if you put the, the TV, you're going to see that, that um, people are really proud of their Puerto Rican culture, of speaking Spanish, of having uh, different, different costumes than, than in the U.S. Um, but at the same time, they are really afraid of, of what will happen uh, with the economy of Puerto Rico uh, if all these federal programs ended. On the one side, you have the poor population that is, is, is thinking, what am I going to do if I lose my subsidies to my housing? Because there are no similar program in the Puerto Rico government, especially now because of the austerity. Um, and on the other side, entrepreneurs and the private sector is also afraid of the impacts in the product market uh, if all these federal programs are removed. Um, we are talking that Puerto Rico received uh, close to 20 billions of dollars um, 
every year in different programs, federal programs, for the government and for the, for the people. Um, some of those funds are rights. You know? So if you're a veteran and you receive a check, that's not a gift because you, you have a contract with the Department of Defense. Uh, in the case of the Social Security, in the case of Medicare, we pay for that. Um, but there are other transfers uh, that are not necessarily rights, uh, contractor rights. And in, and in that sense, uh, many people uh, are afraid what will happen in, in independence uh, if those funds are removed and how are we going to substitute that. Um, the private sector of Puerto Rico um, doesn't export a lot. The local corporations, just 5% of them, uh, are engaged in, in exporting. So they are just looking at the local market and what can happen to the local market. I believe that independence can help Puerto Rico to engage in globalization, to open to the world, to, to be uh, more able to export to different markets. Right now, Puerto Rico is suffering what we call the cabotage laws uh, that uh, state that all the merchandise that are being transported between the U.S. and Puerto Rico have to be in American flags and that those are the most expensive in the whole world. Uh, and there are many discussions here about it. Many people in the private sector are against it. Uh, You're referring to the Jones Act. Okay. Yes, the Jones Act and there's also uh, an equivalent law that uh, prevent airplanes from Europe from transporting um, population from the U.S. To, to, to Puerto Rico and it's limiting the tourist sector uh, as well. We can receive airplanes from the rest of the world but they cannot then go, for instance, if an airplane is coming from China to Puerto Rico, uh, then the airplane cannot go to Florida or to, or to, or to New York. So it's in, in, in practice, is um, limiting the entrance of Puerto Rico to the international logistic. Um, so in that sense, um, it has affected the export capacity of our private sector. So uh, in my opinion, if Puerto Rico become independent, uh, a sort of say of a, of a Brexit, uh, comparing to the Brexit in the case of Greece, um, in the short term, we're going to have uh, 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 and a structural adjustment that is going to be uh, huge for many people. Um, but in the long term, I agree with uh, Juan Rosario, the, the person you interviewed this morning, that there are many uh, prospects in the long term um, for the Puerto Rican economy, but uh, many people are, are, are not measuring or looking uh, in this problem in that way. So, you know, this is uh, one of the interesting comments that you made was about monetary policy and the, the common currency that Puerto Rico has. It has the, you know, the, the dollar as its currency. But the monetary policy is controlled by the Fed. Uh, Puerto Rico has effectively no meaningful influence over the Fed's monetary policy. And, and you heard many similar arguments uh, in Greece from left-wing economists who talked about the fact that the ECB these unelected officials were controlling monetary policy pretty much in a manner that was consistent with the dictates and the political philosophy of the German government. Um, and that if Greece had its own currency, uh, it would be in a position to, uh, you know, uh, deal at least partially with its lack of competitiveness through a currency devaluation. Do you feel the situation is similar here, that, that Puerto Rico would, would benefit in the long run from control of its own currency? Absolutely. Uh, right now, Puerto Rico doesn't have control of, of monetary policy or even the fiscal policy. Right now, the fiscal policy is in hands of this fiscal control board. And in the case of the monetary policy, um, what we are observing is that the, the Fed in the U.S. Is, is taking what we call in economics um, counter-cyclical policies. So, so they are afraid that inflation is, is growing, so they are raising interest rates. Uh, and in the case of the U.S., that might be a good idea. There are some discussion that if that is good or not, but in the case of Puerto Rico, there is no discussion. If you raise the interest rate here, you are in, uh, um, just raising the price of credit, making harder for small entrepreneurs to create or expand their businesses, and in the case of, of um, consumers, to buy houses and to um, buy uh, cars and other products. So that's one of the aspects 
of how this monetary union is affecting in Puerto Rico because there, there is a disconnection between uh, the policies that are needed for the U.S., for the mainland, and the policies that are needed uh, for Puerto Rico. And, and as you say, Puerto Rico have um, barely any voice uh, in the Fed, uh, especially in the committee where the decisions are, are taken. We also don't have any uh, vote in, in the case of the Congress. We don't vote for the president here. So being in a colony in the 21st century is, I don't think it's a good thing for, for, the, for the economy. Well, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. Uh, we've been speaking to Jose Caraballo of the University of Puerto Rico, uh, and this is Dimitri Lascaris reporting from San Juan for The Real News. Mm -hmm.